report from committee, Joint Select Committee on Constitutional Recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Peoples. I call the member for Haslow. Deputy Speaker, on behalf of the Joint Select Committee on Constitutional Recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Peoples, I present the committee's interim report entitled Joint Select Committee on Constitutional Recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Peoples. And I ask leave of the House to make a short statement in connection with the report. I understand it's the wish of the House to grant leave, and there's no objection, so leave is granted. The member for Hasluck has the call. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, I rise today on behalf of the Joint Select Committee on Constitutional Recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Peoples to present our interim report. This is the next step in the journey to recognise this nation's first inhabitants in our founding document, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia. Australia is the venerable elder of the seven world continents and over time was known as Gondwana Land, Terra Australis, the Great Southland, New Holland, and was eventually called Australia. For at least 40 to 60,000 years, Aboriginal people lived isolated in Australia, and over the last thousand years, people from China, India, Arabia, Malaysia, and the Pacific Islands came to our lands as early explorers and traders, followed by others later. Through this, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have an enduring connection to country, and this has remained since 1788. It has never diminished. It is time to recognise this bond. In preparing for this speech, I have been revisiting some of the debates that occurred in this chamber in the lead-up to the 1967 referendum and some of the speeches of one of my and many in this chamber's ideological reference to Robert Menzies. And I must say we have come a long way as a nation since those debates. But it has been enlightening to revisit the words of Menzies upon which the Liberal Party of Australia bases its political ideologue and modern-day discourse on. I want to refer to two quotes from Menzies towards the end of his times as Prime Minister. The first in an address to the Liberal Party Federal Council in 1964, and he said, As the etymology of our name Liberal indicates, we have stood for freedom. We have realised that men and women are not just ciphers in a calculation, but are individual human beings whose individual welfare and development must be the main concern of government. And in the second rally to the Young Liberals in Melbourne in 1962, he said, Our objective must be to build a balanced, strong, progressive and civilised nation in which advances are shared by all sections of the people. And after a few further remarks, Menzies went on to reinforce. So I repeat, we want a progressive nation. To this end, recognition makes sense. Recognition means that Indigenous Australians within the Constitution will be recognised as peers of all Australians. Aboriginal recognition within the Constitution and contemporary Australian society and culture has been a long walk. Deputy Speaker, from the 1967 referendum to the Redfern speech, Mabo, Wick and of course the apologies, all these moments have been critical to the continued journey of reconciliation. Recognition is no different. Deputy Speaker, I do not take my role as chair of this committee lightly. This is an important step in our shared national history, and I am led by the guiding principle that the Constitution is a document owned by all Australians, every single one of us. Equally, the changes must be technically and legally sound. I hope we get to a stage where there is no no campaign and that all Australians get behind this balanced, progressive step for our nation. One factor that is essential for this referendum success is the simplicity of the question put to the Australian people and the understanding of all Australians about what recognition means. I look back on the 1967 referendum, our most successful referendum in decades, and what struck me was the simplicity of the question put to the Australian people, although its breadth and meaning was far greater. I want to take a moment to read it out for the benefit of the House. Do you approve the proposed law for the alteration of the Constitution entitled an act to alter the Constitution so as to omit certain words relating to the people of Aboriginal race in any state and so that Aboriginals are to be counted in the reckoning of the population? Very simplistic in its wording and yet the most profound moment in the healing of our nation. With that in mind, I encourage and urge all parliamentarians, all leaders in our community and all Australians to come to the table, to have a chat, to work through these issues, 
concerns or queries you may have on both sides of the debate. There is an immense amount of goodwill on all sides of the political spectrum with respect to this issue, and we should approach discussions with this spirit in mind. There is strong multi-party support, and it should remain that way for the entire debate. Constitutional recognition should not be used like a political football. This issue should break down the political barrier so that, that so often divides us. People can go to the committee website to find out more information and to find out how you can, make, how you can get involved and make a submission. The committee is required to consider the recommendations of the expert panel on constitutional recognition of Indigenous Australians. Our reporting to Parliament will consider their recommendations for change to the constitution in the light of the current parliamentary consensus on recognition. This interim report discusses draft forms of wording relating to constitutional recognition. It has been put to the committee that drafting questions still exist in relation to a number of existing constitutional provisions as well as a number of possible new provisions. The experts panel's first recommendation was the repeal of section 25 of the constitution. Section 25 is widely considered a racially discriminatory provision and it was recommended that the Australian people be given the opportunity to remove it. This committee has not been persuaded that the section has ongoing use and this report considers that it can be removed without consequential effects to the constitution. This interim report discusses the view of the expert panel that race as a concept is outmoded and outdated. As well as in section 25, race is referred to in section 5126 of the Constitution, the Commonwealth's power to make laws with respect to the people of any race. The expert panel recommended that Australian people be given the opportunity to remove both sections and they reported a large amount of public support for those recommendations. This interim report considers that the social and legal history of section 5126 of the Constitution, the section that in 1967 the Aboriginal people voted to amend at referendum so that the Commonwealth could make laws with respect to Indigenous Australians. After the referendum, section 5126 allowed the Commonwealth to pass various legislation that enabled native title and the creation of ORIC, to name just two. In this interim report, the committee considers that the Commonwealth should continue to be able to make laws with respect to Indigenous Australians because of, and I quote the expert panel, their unique place in the history of the country and their prior and continuing existence. This means that any referendum that would propose to remove section 5126 should also propose to replace it with a section that allows the Commonwealth to make laws for the benefit of Indigenous Australians. To that end, this interim report discusses forms of wordings that could be used to continue to allow the Commonwealth to make laws with respect to Indigenous Australians. There are five forms of wording set out in the text of the interim report, which reflects that at least five different proposals that have been put to the committee in its work so far. The committee view put forward in this interim report is that in making laws under such a power, a successful referendum proposal must prevent the Commonwealth from discriminating against Indigenous Australians. Discrimination is a strong theme in the expert panel's report and a common thread in the conversation this committee is having about recognition. In tabling this interim report, the committee reaches a view that a successful referendum proposal must recognise Indigenous Australians as the First Peoples of Australia. The report discusses a number of forms of wording that would give effect to this recognition. One such form of wording is the expert's proposed new 51A, which would incorporate a four-line statement of recognition into the legislative power. This interim report also discusses other ways that preambular language of recognition could be incorporated into the constitution, including an introductory statement and a further act of recognition. At the first public hearing of the committee in Brisbane on the 30th of June, Mr Gershwin, the CEO of Queensland Tourism Industry Council, articulate the reasoning behind constitutional recognition quite poignantly. He said, we have a unique cultural heritage and a population of First People, part of the modern Australian social fabric with ancient roots in this continent. He went on to say that constitutional recognition is not ultimately about Australians in Australia. This is about human history, where we have a line of sight, if you like, to a distant part of history that is not available in many other places. On behalf of the committee, I would like to thank the people and organisations that have already generously provided their time and views to the committee. 
I would also like to place on record my thanks to the Secretariat staff that have put in countless hours in compiling this interim report. And finally, I want to end with the words from our Prime Minister. Yet for two centuries, with fragrant exceptions, of course, Australians have collectively failed to show Aboriginal people the personal generosity and warmth of welcome that we have habitually extended to the stranger in our midst. The first Aboriginal member of this parliament, Senator Neville Bonner, once warned his colleagues that history would judge us all. We shouldn't have to wait for the judgment of history. A fair go for Aboriginal people is, too far, is far too important to be put off to the judgment of history. Deputy Speaker, I commend the interim report to the House. Thank the member for Haslock.